I begin with thee For you are the key In calamity Is my serenity For yet your name I know I can see Everything you hear, everything you see And you make my heart, so you know my pain But you made Hassan, and you made Hussein And you sent the moon to follow the sun, but tonight Zainab is without no one, and you made the night to cover the day, and reveal the stars, and you sent the rain. And you made the jinn and, and you made the men and you made the men but you used no clay when you made Hussein when you made Hussein and you made the light from your holy love and you taught the name and said Adam recite And said Adam recite Their names in heaven were mentioned The first words Adam had spoken Now they lay on earth with their backs broken Our Lord swore the Taha and he sees all the unseen But what did Zainab thy see? No king at all Yasin Our Lord swore betaha And he sees all the unseen But what did Zainab thy see? No king at all Yasin Muhammad was first to hold you And he knew what you were born to Your holy name is written next to Muhammad on the throne too When Jibra'il showed him this day Taha was the first to mourn you Will the one who is from me and I am from him be lonely Zainab replies thou be seen What will be of Ali Yasin? Our Lord swore betaha And he sees all the unseen But what did Zainab thy see? Looking at Ali Yasin If you forgot Taha people, see Hussein and he'll remind you. You left Medina and your shadow was Zainab right beside you. The people were all divided in you, but none could divide you. The master of heaven's teens is martyred by the unclean. Those who don't believe in the unseen will never know Ali Yasin. Our Lord swore betaha and he sees all the unseen. But what did Zainab thy see? Look 
looking at all the yasin, looking at all the yasin. You won't recognize your Zainab Ya Haidar After this eve With bruises on her back and in chains to watch Sham Your Zainab believe Your loved one is seeing her loved one's head raise high on a spear One eye sees Ali Akbar one fell upon your asghar And the tents are burning in between Come and see Ali Yaseen Our Lord swore betaha And he sees all the unseen But what did Zainab I see? Looking at Ali Yaseen I begin with thee, for you are the key In calamity is my serenity For yet your name, I know I can see Everything you hear, everything you see And you made my heart, so you know my pain But you made Hassan, and you made Hussein And you sent the moon to follow the sun But tonight Zainab Is without no one And you made the night To cover the dead And reveal the stars And you sent the rain and you made the jinn And you made the men But you used no clay When you made Hussein And you made the light From your holy light And you taught the name and said Adam recite And said Adam recite Their names in heaven were mentioned The first words Adam had spoken Now they lay on earth with their backs broken Our Lord swore the Taha and he sees all the unseen But what did Zainab die see? Looking at Ali Yaseen Our Lord swore betaha And he sees all the unseen But what did Zainab die see? Looking at Ali Yaseen أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم بمصابنا بالحسين الشهيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين 
وصلى الله على خير خلقه اجمعين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم لبيك داعي الله لبيك إن كان لم يجبك بدني عند استغاثتك ولساني عند استنصارك فقد أجابك قلبي وسمعي وبصري سبحان ربنا إن كان وعد ربنا لمفعولا قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلما وضعتها قالت رب إني وضعتها أنثى والله أعلم بما وضعت وليس الذكر كالأنثى آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected brothers and sisters From wherever you may be joining Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala Peace uh, Mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Be upon you all Last night we were discussing The upbringing of our sons how we should mold our sons to be uh, model citizens and uh, model uh, personalities in our communities. Tonight, we shift the focus to the daughters, how we need to mold them and build them to be model citizens and what kind of citizens we want them to be. Because what whatever aspiration that we have for how we want our daughters to turn out will depend heavily on how we raise them. Because our the upbringing will be the reflection. Also, the upbringing, however far they go in life, will be a projection of the upbringing that they are afforded. So it is uh, very important and very uh, and indeed imperative that we pay attention to um, how we raise these two. Of course, we need to raise both our boys and girls upon the tenets of Islam and raise both our uh, boys and girls to be the best Muslims possible, a better generation of Muslims than we are, inshallah. If, if, uh, if this generation could produce um, mashayikh, stud- uh, students of Hausa, let the next generation have professors in the Hausa and the generation after that to have um, Mujahideen, inshallah, if we cannot have one in our generation. See, um, there's this belief or this notion that women are ontologically better than men. So this does not mean that every woman is better than uh, every man, uh, nor the inverse. Instead, what it means is that the nature of women is better than the nature of men. This is a whole discussion. If you need more information on this, you can refer to my brother, um, Muruti Ali Nchinyan. These are his fields. These are things that he discusses a lot. You see, 
But taking from that principle, we understand that uh, women become violent earlier. They become um, religiously obligated to do uh, to do all the wajibat, all the obligatory actions earlier. Thus, yes, women do mature quicker. They mature uh, before men. This is true. So now, uh, them being better, it, it, this means they are better in because a 25-year-old boy, 25-year-old man and a 25-year-old woman, uh, the woman has performed swala more. She could have been performing swala for about 16 years, whereas he has been performing swala for only 10 years. You see, So these six years, of course, they mean something in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, they have these um, things that they are better at, women, by default. Not all of them, but by default, they have that uh, advantage, you see. So, you know, uh, as a parent also, you have this essence, this this feeling of protectiveness, ghira over her more than the boy. You know, there, there's in some cultures, especially when a child is born, a child is born and they are boy, like, ah, zakula. You know, ah, he'll grow anyway, you know, men, they fend for themselves. But when it's a girl, then it becomes a little difficult. You see, then it becomes a difficult. Then the father starts getting stressed. Or, Ish, I need to be involved in this child's life. You know, when the when the child is a boy, it's it's more difficult. It's for a man for for the father want to want to be involved. They're like, ah, he'll grow up. It's fine. He'll find his own way. But when it's a girl, they will run to the moon and back for the sake of their daughter. Because there's just something that our subconscious understands about uh, girl children um, being more important to the culture and being more important to um, to the progress of a society that we cannot explain it, but it's there deep down in our hearts. We know it and we acknowledge it. You see, um, this we see this also. There's this ontological difference that when the wife of Amran, when the wife of Amran uh, fell pregnant after a long time, also of not of seeking a child and asking God for a child after many years of being married, this is the thing. Um, from this story, actually, what we need to learn is that. If, for example, you're 25, 30, 32, 37 even, and you can't get a child, uh, you've been married, be patient. Who knows, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed a child for you in the future. When you are 40, when you are 50. It's not all of us that are going to have children in our early 20s, early th- in our 30s, or maybe he willed for you a child in the 40s. Maybe this is a test of your patience that uh, Allah knows something about you. He knows something about you that if he gives a child to you now, you might lose a certain touch with him. Yes, we have those teachings that some people are deprived because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoys listening to their to their voices. And he knows that if he grants them what they want, then they will stop calling on him. We do have the, uh, such a teaching. But this is from this story and from the story of Abraham, we learn this, that you can wait. It's a, it's not a race. It's not a race to have children young. Yes, of course, it's advantageous because you grow with them, you play with them, and so on and so forth. But it's not a race. I know a brother who was married for 13 years to a woman. Uh, they never had any kids. They got divorced, married another woman. When she told him, He's uh, that she's pregnant. First thing he did, of course, tears of joy, and then immediately afterwards, he he prostrated. You see, this shows you that no, this person now Allah sees that no, this person will not cease praying for me, even if I grant them the child. Biologically okay, everything is okay, 
but then the child doesn't just doesn't come because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something. There's a wisdom there. Just look for the wisdom. You'll see it, inshallah. This is the story that we learn from the wife of Amran and from uh, the wives of uh, Ibrahim. Sarah, the wife of uh, Ibrahim, alayhim salam. But no, sometimes the child will come in due time. It's not a race. It's not a competition. And it's also Allah's will that some he gives children of only boys, some only girls. Sometimes he mixes them, mixes them boys and girls. And then he made who he wills to be barren. Some are barren. Allah did not will for them to have children. This is also a blessing for you. Just look for the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything. Inshallah. So she said, once once she was now she went through the pregnancy and then said that I have uh, vowed whatever is in my belly to the most merciful. So when uh, in those times what this meant is that when the child is born, they'll be taken to the temple and raised in the temple and grow up in the temple. And now all uh, only boys were permitted in the temple. And then they they were raised there. Is this maybe the the root of monks? I don't know. It just hit me now. I don't know. But now they go there to the monastery and they stay there. These um these young boys and they are raised there. They become rabbis. They become um uh. They become rabbis, they become priests, they become um, lead, uh, the leaders of the community in terms of spirituality and so on and so forth. So she says that, okay, you know, I've made this oath for the Rahman. And then she gave birth. And then when she finally bore the child and gave birth, what did she say? She said, Rabbi, Oh Allah, I've given birth to a girl child. I've given girl birth to a female. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. And Allah knows better what um, she has given birth. He, from this we learn, you know, there's this problem. Uh, it existed long ago. It still exists today that when you don't have a son, uh, it's like, um, you don't have you don't have kids. You see, it's like ah, ish girls are, are of less value and so on and so forth. Your surname ends, blah blah blah. Let it end, Habib. It's the will of Allah. Wallahu a'lamu bima wadat. So here we can discuss this and and say that maybe Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wanted to teach. Two things that number one, spirituality, and number uh, firstly, spirituality and um, dealing with religious things does not only need boys. It's not only uh, uh, special for boys. Girls can also participate in it. Women can also participate in it. To different levels, different extents, in different departments. Maybe that's the lesson that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wanted to teach. By giving, she made an oath for the child, and then she wanted to put the child in the mon in the monastery. So Allah wanted to teach everyone that no, even women are uh, welcome into the in the temples to do religious work, to do God's work. That's number one. Number two is to remove this notion that only a child is a, is a boy. That when you have a child, the boy child, now you take pride. Yeah, mashallah, if a boy child. Abu Baba, the, the girl is much better for you. She is mercy. He is a blessing. She is mercy. Mercy. These things you'll be questioned about them. I blessed you with 500,000 rands. What did you do with it? But mercy, you'll never be questioned about it. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. So these are the two things uh, that possibly could be the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
uh, instead of giving Imran a boy, he gave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a daughter. That no, the religious work can be for women as well. No, a child is not only a boy, even a girl. They have their value. This is uh, important. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. Walaysa dhakaru kal unta. And then comes the, the this affirmation that no, yes, of course, uh, a, a boy is not the same as a girl. There is a difference between the two. That difference, yes, exists. However, this does not mean the one is better than the other, the one is higher ranked than the other. That is, by default, no, it depends on each of their works. So this is one of the first things that we need to uh, teach our girl children. Not that they are better than boys, no, all the Billah. Boys are, and boy, as I said yesterday, Boys, men, husbands are endangered species. We need to take care of them. Girls, alhamdulillah. Uh, it's just that uh, the source of this protection of girls cannot be trusted, the media. The media is the same one that uh, objectifies the girls, teaches them, then teaches them that certain outfits uh, are better and uh, certain outfits... Uh, oppression and so on so it it materializes them and commodifies them and then says it's protecting them this is uh this is a problem and so we cannot trust the source of their protection and praise But we need to teach them, our girls, we need to teach them that, look, yes, uh, biologically, there's that advantage for men that they can lift um, heavier weights, they can run a bit faster, they can uh, climb. They, they can, there's these things by default that are there because of uh, the biological aspect. But we should teach them also that, no, you can do that stuff. And don't compete with boys. Don't compete with boys in being boys. Let the boys be boys. Don't compete with them. However, you can also do this stuff. Just as we said that we should teach the boys how to cook and clean and iron and so on and so forth, whatever is said to be should be um, left for boy for for girl for boys should also be taught to the girls. Teach your da- uh, boy, girls garden work. Teach your girls garden work. Teach your girls some handy work as well. So when you change your, if you get a puncture, don't only call your boys. Call the girls as well. Show them how it's done. This is not killing chivalry, but it's just creating girls that can do things for themselves. This is very important. And sticking true to the nature of women is that women are teachers. You teach a man, you teach a man, you teach a man. You teach a woman, you teach a nation, as the saying goes. So when you teach, uh, because girls love that kind of teaching, they love explaining, they love all of that. It's in their nature. Plus they are um, naturally... Uh, express expression wise more gifted so teach her teach her it's surprising that some Muslims were rejoicing and happy that a certain party said uh, the um, govern, government of a certain country whereas that group is known for denying women education. You rejoice for that. You are in South Africa here, alhamdulillah, where uh, your daughter can be a PhD, can have a PhD in any field that she wishes. Your wife can have the same uh, luxury. 
all the girls in your neighborhood can have that luxury. But then you are here rejoicing that that group, known for denying girls the right to education, you are rejoicing that. I'm digressing. Sticking true to the nature of women, because they are natural teachers, because they are natural teachers, teacher. They are natural nurturers. Nurture her. Whenever she offers you tea, drink the tea. Yes, I know you are on a no-sugar diet. I know you are trying to be very healthy, alhamdulillah. But when your daughter makes you tea and put too much sugar in it, drink it with a smile. You'll drink water to dilute down the sugar afterwards. Drink that tea with a smile. Okay? Because what are you trying to teach her? That No, you are nurturing. You are kind. Continue being kind. Make it a part of you to be kind. You know, even the most butch woman, uh, I hope that's not an offensive term, even the most butch woman that you'll see when your collar is a bit, she'll be like, yo, bro, come on, fix your collar. She may express it in a not so feminine way, but she'll exp- still express, expresses, express it. She'll still come and you know, try and fix fix you up. Strangers even. So you want to stick, uh, be good, uh, stick uh, to that nature, be true to that nature, but uh, however, uh, her having certain luxuries and being, um, sticking true to her nature still and uh, being a hard worker. I have two examples here. There's a picture on social media now of a lady professor who carried uh, on her back the child of one of her students. Professor carrying that child. She's like, no, this child, you are my student, so I'm basically your mother. So this child is my grandchild. Give me that grandchild. Puts it on her back, continues with her class. You see? So even though she's that professor, that knowledgeable and that powerful and that influential in that university, she sticks through to the mother instinct in her, to that nurturing instinct in her, that love in her. Unfortunately, now we see that our girls are being taught that, no, they have to be rough and robust. Yeah, rough and robust, a little rough around the edge, but with a little uh, spices and sweets. Not a problem. Second example, I was traveling public transport with um, Akela. So she starts crying and everything. Uh, new father at the time, child is one year, uh, one year and a couple of months. Everyone could see that sh- this guy is in distress. Some ladies, I don't know them. I've never seen them before. We never even exchanged names, contact, nothing. She was like, oh, give her to me. I gave her to this lady. For one and a half hours, two hours, she's sitting on this lady's lap comfortably, even fell asleep. I'm looking at this lady. She's like, I know she's asleep. Give me the bottle and so on and so forth. When we got out, she's like, ah, no, take care of your child. Bye, bye. Halas. No pay, no nothing. She just saw that that this new father is in distress and doesn't know what to do, doesn't know how to cope. I think she just took the child. That's the beautiful nature of women. Now, if we lose this now, if we lose this, unfortunately, is that it has an effect on the others. There's the other viral video that you saw. Old woman gets in a bus. All the guys are sitting down. Chivalry is dead. Is there a gentleman to stand up and sit for me? Like, oh, but you told us that men and women are equal. They're, they are the same. So if I was, in uh, 10 years ago, if I was willing to stand up for you, it's 10 years later now, stay standing. Why should I stand up for you just because you're a woman? Unfortunately, what, what is being taught in the media to our daughters, this is what it does do. This is the adverse side of it. That even men, they lose that sense of servitude to men, to, to women. Girls are kind and soft. So also show her, show her that kindness and softness. Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam, what does he teach us? 
He teaches us that when you come home with gifts, start with the girls, from the youngest to the oldest. Then go to the boys. So even if you have twins who are two years old, a boy and a girl, what do they call them? Fraternal twins. A boy and a girl. And then two sisters to them. And then uh, another boy. You start with the one twin, the girl. You start with the girl, her sisters, and then you come back to that boy. Because as I said, you want to teach the boys to work for what they what they have. And also you want to teach the girls to be this kind and this sweet. It's dying. We need to revive it. It's very important. Because if our community doesn't, if our community does not have women of this nature, we're in trouble. We are in deep trouble. Because we need both sides. We cannot have rough men and then rough women. Like charges repel. Opposites attract. There'll be that balance. Inshallah. There are other things that it is, it's recommended to teach your girl child, uh, sewing, um, cooking, of course. That, But now we understand that, no, these are not exclusive for girls only. But it's very good that um, your girl knows how to um, cook. It's very good that she knows how to sew. These are not exclusive for girls, but obviously in the teachings that we have, um, they are recommended for girls. So these are the kind of girls that we want. So how we raise them is pivotal. We don't want um, girls to compete with boys. Whatever boys can do, girls can do better. No, that's not true. It's not entirely true. We don't want girls with that mentality that they go out in the world to compete with boys. They grow up in high school, everything is boys, girls. In primary school, boys, girls. No, these people are different. I personally, I don't know. I'm on the fence about these boys' schools and girls' schools. Like a school exclusive for boys in a school. I'm I'm on the fence about it. But maybe that's better for the natural growth of girls. I don't know. I'll have to do my research. We have to teach girls how to create their own wealth and not depend entirely on men. This is very important. They don't they shouldn't even when she does get married, um, she has to find a way to create wealth. Can She can get a job and whatnot, but it should not disturb this side. You see, it, maybe it was a bad system. Maybe it was a bad system, but, but it had some good in it, whereby girls were limited to being nurses and teachers and um, social workers. You know, these... Um, Social jobs. Perhaps it was a bad system, but maybe it, there was some wisdom in it. Maybe there was some wisdom in it. Then it, it's not, there's no competition. Basically, uh, girls don't want to go. Because you'll find, you'll meet somebody at a job interview. She's a girl. And then you're just talking, oh, okay, no, where do you currently work? Oh, all right, what qualifications do you have? She's already competing with you just because you are there. We don't need this personality of amongst um, our girls, our Muslim girls. Yes, they should be, and they should have the the a certain personality that they are not easily attainable or easily flattered. Mentioning this about easily flattered, there's this brother. He always buys his uh, daughter sushi every now and then. I asked him, but why? You say it's expensive. Currently, your finances are not okay, but you still insist on buying your daughter sushi. He's like, no, 
I want her to know that whenever she wants sushi, her father can buy it for her. So she won't be easily impressed by some guy, Jay, who buys her sushi or offers her sushi because she all she has to do is just call her father. Because if they are easily impressed by these things, then we're going to lose them. Then these are the things that they will go out and look for. That I must. But if she gets these things at home, it's just normal for her. So then even the value of a man will be difficult in her eyes, will be different in her eyes. It won't be the material things it will be pro- he can provide primarily. It will be mostly the, the uh, metaphysical things that he can offer. She'll fall in love with his mind. She'll fall in love with his manners. Then you know that I know the next generation is safe. But so long as in the must first conversation, Minang Tandi Mali. What are we gonna gain? Is there anything we're gonna gain from having mothers that like that? Because they will only give us daughters of the same mentality. They are the teachers, of course. So we have to be mindful of how we um, teach and raise our children, especially the daughters in this aspect of creating, the, making them love their femininity, femininity, making them love being girls, showing them how good it is to be a girl, having role models. Yes, of course, they need to be able, they need to learn physical, physicality as well. They need to learn their martial arts and so on and so forth. But on display must be their woman nature. Like if you look at Lady Zainab, Salamullah Alaiha, always hijab, always covered, always, you know, uh, they, they had a neighbor in Kufa. He says that he was shocked to hear that it's Zainab speaking in the court, in the court of Ibn Ziyad. It's like, uh, Zainab? Yeah, I was those people's neighbor. I never heard her voice. I never even saw her shadow. Hijab is, that's a whole other discussion. But I'm trying to get to a point. And then after Ashura, she became the lioness. She became the one who speaks in the court of Yazid. She became the one who, when they tried to kill um, uh, Imam Sajjad, she would defend him with her body, throwing herself on him to prevent them killing him. Stand between the swords in the court of Yazid, same thing. To turn it up, they need to. But by default, the other the thing is that the, by default, those default settings are being erased. They're being altered too much. The girls are made to compete with boys all the time. It's it's horrible. It's horrible to witness. You're a young father, you just have a, a, a small daughter. You are afraid of the world that you are bringing her into. We have to be very mindful about this. About daughters, uh, we have to clear some shubhat about the daughter of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, Sukaina. You know, she's accused of, um, there was a time poetry was seen as something lowly and something uh, not reputable. You see, it was as if, no, the Qur'an, the, the, the certain mindset that, no, the Qur'an came, so it abolished the age of um, poetry competitions, blah, 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 due to a lack of understanding. So she'll always be accused of, no, she used to attend uh, and host poetry sessions. Yeah, no. And then now poetry is in line with what? Music. No, she used to enjoy music and what? The, no, baby okay now. Used to host host majalis of Abdullah al Hussein. This is what she used to do from that young age until she passed on. See, she that's what uh, 
And the thing is, the machales that she used to hold were only for women. So even if they say that, no, she used to display her hair, Baba, they're only women. They're only women. What's the issue? What's the problem? They're only women there. You see, when people cannot find, um, when people cannot find a fault in you, they will fabricate a fault for you. So even the things that you do that are normal, they will be taken and and used as weapons against against you. I'm sure we're done. We we we're clear on those two misconceptions. It was not poetry sessions that she was holding and hosting. It was the majalis of Abu Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam. And obviously at these majalis, poets come. Of course, female poets. Imam al-Radha alayhi salam used to do the same thing. He would put build a, put a curtain, have his woman on the other side. Da'abal is there. Da'abal recites his uh, masaib, recites his poetry. The woman cry on the other side. Da'abal this side only with men. They used to do this. It's not a problem with that. Having poet, having poems reciting for Abu Abdullah al Hussein, probably one of the most rewarding things in the Majalis. They say, no, she lost, she left the path of her father, blah, blah, blah. No, a'udhu billah. Respect her, please. Also, this is a challenge that I want to give to the ladies. Don't only read about Sukaina or Ruqayya as that young girl in um, who was there in Ashura, who um, uh, whose ear, earrings were removed on the 11th night, a night like this. Don't just end there. Read about her. Read about her life, how she stayed after that. You can gain some inspiration from that. Even Lady Zainab, don't let your studying her life only end with Ashura and Arba'in. And then skipping many years and then go back to her mother and then get to her mother. Let's not do that. Let us uh, make effort to learn about these personality that, personalities that we take our ideology from. It's imperative that we do so. On a night like this, the 11th night, we know about the masaib that occurred during the day. During the day after Dhuhr, Salah, the fighting ensued. Waqutila man qutil. Waqabla subi man subi. Those who were killed were killed. And what kind of killing they um, observed. But now, turn your take your attention and bring it to the agony that was felt by the women, by the girls, the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Just imagine the mental agony now that it is around Asr and then there's no defender for you. The only defender, Ali ibn al-Hussein Zain al-Abideen is sick, wounded, cannot fight, cannot stand. You sitting in the tent, no protector, no Imam Hussein afterwards. And you hear the deliberations between the enemy. Oh, okay, uh, so who will kill him? Okay, no, he's fallen off his horse. He's very, very fatigued. Who's going to fight him? One comes, throws a stone. It hits the forehead of Abu Abdullah. They hear all this. They see it happening. Last stand. After him, the battle is over. After him, they are in trouble. The agony that they were going through. Hmm? It gets worse. From the stone, now arrows, archers on a tired Fatigued, thirsty, wounded man, archers aim their arrows to this man. You are a girl, you are a daughter, you are a mother, you see this. (laughs) 
it gets worse. Not only arrows. They throw spears at Abu Abdullah al Hussein. It gets worse. Because nobody wanted the responsibility of killing Hussein, so they had to injure him, injure him, cut him here, cut him here, do swords. One cuts this arm, one does this, one does that. And now comes al Ain Shimr bin Dil Joshan sitting on the chest of Abu Abdullah al Hussein with a blunt knife that he had to strike the neck of Abu Abdullah 12 times. You see this, you are his daughter. Tamasa, this, they just imagine how horrible it is to witness such. It gets worse. They call horses, they uh, assign horses. These horses are called Al Awajiya. So these horses, Khail Al Awajiya, they are. Tra- <laughs> These horses are trained that each each leg of this horse can lift about 50 pounds or 100 pounds. Can't remember the numbers correctly. Each leg of this horse can lift about that much. So imagine the crushing down power when the... You are in the tents now, before the loot has even come. Now you hear, as as it is narrated, that they would hear as if it's glass breaking. But no, it was the ribs of Abu Abdullah al Hussein crushing. They pulverized his ribs using these horses. Ten horses used to trample upon the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein with that crushing power in just one leg. And then it gets even worse. Now that is done, the attack is on the tents now. Your last covering. They throw torches, they burn the tent. You run outside, they pull off your cloak. They see a little girl. Now, now it's uh, booties of war. They pull off the earrings of the girls. They whip the women. They lash them. They chase them. They chain them. They make them rise on, ride on um, saddleless camels. One poet describing this whole image, he speaks about the 11th night. Oh, what a night it is. He says that one of these Zalimin uh, offers water to Ruqayya. She says that, no, I will not drink before my father. Take me to my father. <laughs> she says, where is my father? They show her a pile of rocks with spears pointing out of it and arrows and whatnot. That is where Hussein is. She says, no, that cannot be my father. I cannot drink before water before my father. They take her, they say, there. On the spear is the head of your father. But now she's little, she can't get that high. This is the poem, poet describing this. She raises this cup of water. She says, Father, drink. No response from him. She asks this very um, enemy. He's like, please make my father drink. These are the masa- these are the calamities. These are the, the worst things that um, the women, the, the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to witness. Lady Zainab, it is said that she went to the body of Imam al Hussein and said, Oh Allah, accept this offering from us. 
when Yazid asks her, what, how do you see how God dealt with you? Just because he said, God, God, she says, no, I saw everything as beautiful. I saw everything as beauty. Oh Allah, accept this little, oh Allah, accept this offering from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, keep place and keep the love of Abu Abdullah al Hussein in our hearts, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not remove the love of Al Muhammad from our hearts, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our lives the lives of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad and our deaths like the deaths of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our communities and um, to grow our communities and to progress our communities, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to have more of these uh, gatherings for in honor of Ahlul Bayt Ali. Salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure those who are ill and to have mercy on the deceased and to send to them the reward of Al Fatiha before it's Salat Ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. <laughs> Allah <laughs> Allah